Hello, hello, wonderful to have you here. In uh, today's video, what I want to discuss is leaving enlightenment aside, leaving our ideas about nirvana aside. Uh, I think many people are uh, very caught up in ideas of enlightenment and nirvana, awakening, however we're going to call it. Uh, I, want to, I want to investigate that a little bit in today's video. If you're new to this channel of mine and interested in living a wiser and a kinder and a calmer life, consider subscribing to this channel. And click the bell down below if you want to receive notifications when I come out with new videos. So I think many people are, at least when I look at my comments, there's a certain percentage of people uh, who are, I think, very uh, concerned about enlightenment, about awakening, nirvana, about the final goal. Uh, what is it? Uh, is it really possible? Uh, are there concerned about different ways of interpreting it? And I'm partly responsible for this myself. I absolutely admit to that. I'm interested in the question too. Uh, as a sort of philosopher background, uh, there are many issues of enlightenment that are philosophically interesting, that are personally interesting, that are questionable in various respects. Uh, and I'm, you know, I'm going to continue to make videos about the topic, but in today's video, I want to suggest a different kind of approach. Today, I'm going to suggest you leave these questions about enlightenment aside, now, unless you really, really want to devote your entire life to the question right now. Now, why do I say this? Uh, because it seems to me that a lot of, a lot of the times, uh, questions about enlightenment can lead to doubts. They can get in the way. And these doubts are, to my way of thinking, really unnecessary. Now, what kind of doubts am I talking about? Well, the doubts about what is enlightenment really? Uh, are there enlightened people around? Uh, how long is it going to take me to get there? What does it really look like? Is it possible for somebody living my kind of lifestyle to become enlightened? And these are all questions that, uh, that I think many of us can sort of ruminate upon for long periods of time and can sort of divert our practice, and I'm going to discuss sort of how that might happen. But if you don't find yourself ruminating on such things, then don't worry about it so much. Uh, maybe, uh, you know, watch this video just to see if there's something that you might get out of it, but uh, I'm talking more to people who sort of really are concerned about this or find themselves concerned at certain times of their lives. To me, enlightenment, if it's even possible, and I honestly am agnostic about that question, full enlightenment, I mean, if it's possible, it's something like an ultra, ultra, ultra marathon, you know, like some enormous race that's going to take decades of life to get to the end of. It's not the sort of thing that's going to be over quickly. It's going to be a long, long process of hard work. It's something that's so far out in the distance that thinking about it too much may simply discourage us because of the distances involved. It's, it's like uh, starting out on a journey of several thousand miles by looking at the, or, or considering and, con and contemplating the, the final resting place, the final end, all the time. It can be discouraging for many people. And we can get or we're, the time it will take to get there is so long that we can get sidetracked by our mind sort of playing tricks upon us, uh, wondering about various aspects of that final destination that really don't matter. Now, what does matter then? What matters is what's going on right here and right now. What matters is this breath. What matters is the next breath. What matters is this piece of obsession that we're dealing with right now, this worry, that sadness. These are the things that matter. That is to say, whatever's arising right now, that's what we really have to deal with, not some far-off concept of a goal that we may never see, and if we do see, we'll be very, very far in the future. The calm that we can achieve right now by taking a deep breath or by sitting for five minutes of meditation is really entirely independent of the achieving of some final goal down the line. 
Now, yes, it may indeed provide some glimpse of that goal by giving us an idea of what uh, true equanimity or uh, true uh, relaxation around our tendency to grasp at things might feel like. I mean, it gives us sort of an inkling of what that might be like, but whatever that inkling is, it's something right here and right now. It's not that final goal. So what we should focus on is, are these small incremental benefits? Because these benefits are going to be incremental. They're small, they're slow. It's the sort of thing where it's, you know, two steps forward today and one step back tomorrow, or frankly, it can be two steps forward today and three steps backward tomorrow, and then three steps forward the next day. You don't know. It's a kind of thing that ebbs and flows. But as you look back, say six months or a year from now, you may find that you're able to tolerate your neighbor more. Uh, you're less bothered by st stuff that's going on around you. You're more able to turn off the television when you realize that the news you're watching just isn't really doing you any good. Uh, these kinds of things. Small incremental changes can happen, but they happen over significant periods of time. And during this process, focusing on a finish line that's way, way, way down the road can be discouraging. I sort of think of, you know, children in a car on a long journey. You know, when are we going to get there? When are we going to get there? And I can think of myself with my younger brother when we were kids in the car. And, you know, my brother asking, when are we going to get there? And me wondering the same thing. And I can, I can remember describing to my brother how long a car trip would take by how many times you could watch Sesame Street. I, I believe Sesame Street was an hour long, and so if it was a two-hour journey, I would tell my brother, well, just think of it as the same length as watching Sesame Street twice over. I, I, that's, that's a sort of a strange memory to come to mind. But that's the kind of thing where, yes, of course, there may be a final goal out there somewhere. Maybe it's, you know, maybe it's really there. Maybe it's something to achieve. But for now, it doesn't help to ruminate on it. We can also get dazzled by that final goal, and in comparison, the stuff we're dealing with now seems boring. You know, it's not that, you know, flashy kind of nirvana. It's, it's the more regular day-to-day -day stuff. Now, in Zen, they know this well. They'll talk about how, you know, before enlightenment, it's chop wood, carry water, and after enlightenment, it's chop wood and carry water. That's the sort of idea where enlightenment really shouldn't be thought of as, you know, fireworks. Uh, but nevertheless, many of us who, and myself in included, you know, who don't know a lot about enlightenment may think of it in those terms and, and so get bored with what we're dealing with right now and so not really be able to deal with it properly. You know, meanwhile, we're saying to ourselves, you know, I'm seeing a rise in my mind, the same stuff today that arose last week or last month. You know, where are we, right? I mean, you know, aren't we there yet? And this can become exacerbated also when we beat up on ourselves, because we're always going to find places where we fall back, where we perhaps give up the practice for a while. That happens to all of us, where there'll be a time where we perhaps can't meditate when we want to, or we find ourselves getting uh, overly angry or greedy in some respect. And if we're too focused on that final goal, that can lead to a sense of self-hatred or a sense of anger with where we are right now. A feeling that, um, you know, if we've given something up for a week, if we've given up meditation for a time, we think, oh, now I'm even farther back. You know, it was bad enough before and now, now look what I've done. And that reaction would be a shame because it would really, it's the reaction that becomes the problem rather than the lapse that we've had for a time. Uh, the reaction only makes it worse. Because at the end of the day, all of practice really is coming back. Coming back to that present moment. Coming back to the breath. That when we're in meditation, where the mind goes this way and that, and, and many people who begin meditation sort of think, uh, get frustrated, you know, they, they, they want to see a calm mind right, right now. 
But in many ways, the practice is not one of finding a calm mind, as though we could sort of force the mind to be calm, but rather one of just bringing the, the mind back continually, over and over and over again. And so, as a result, but through this practice of bringing it back, we begin to gain more control over it. Or, or at least it settles down. I mean, we can look at it either way. Control may not be the best way to look at it. It may be better simply to say that by doing this process of bringing the mind back, the mind does eventually, over a long period of time, settle down. And so we get to a place where even if it is wandering, we're not as upset by it. We see it as part of, part of practice. In the same way, our practice wanders. Sometimes it's good practice, sometimes it's not so good practice. But part of the overarching practice is to continue bringing that practice back, bringing it back by uh, reading Dharma, learning Dharma from people, what, what is the right direction to go, what are the right ways to think about our lives, what is the right way to approach the next moment. And through doing that, I think we can have confidence that we're on the right path. And that's really the important thing. The important thing is to know we're headed in the right direction. Once we know that, then the final destination will take care of itself. I did an earlier video on this question of coming back to practice, uh, which I think is really such an important way to look at things, and I'll, I'll leave a link to it up here on the screen if you haven't seen it or want to see it again. If you're getting something out of these videos of mine, consider taking a look over at my Patreon page and helping out the channel. Thanks so much, and we'll catch you on the next video, and all of you, be well.